Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and uh, we've been asked here to insert a symbol. We have the less than symbol, the greater than symbol, or the equal to symbol in each blank to make a true statement. All right, let's give this a try. Um, I do just want to say real quick for students who struggle to remember the less than and greater than symbols. On these problems here won't matter too much um, if you use that kind of elementary school method of opening it up towards the bigger number like some of your elementary school teachers might have said uh, the alligator eats the bigger number and that's fine um, but you do need to be able to read those as the less than and greater than symbols in order to do the depth of problems that are on the GED. So um, I use a number line to help me remember. That's actually where those symbols come from. It's either end of the number line. You know, as we go to the left on a number line, uh, our numbers get smaller and smaller. And so this symbol here is the less than. It's the arrowhead from the left side of a number line. And then same thing here on the right hand side, as you go off to the right, your numbers get greater and greater, like one, two, three, and so on and so forth. And so over here on the right, this is the greater than sign. And that's how those symbols uh, originated. Okay, so um, five and negative five, I'm looking for a relationship there. Now, a lot of new B students will tell me five is equal to negative five, but it sure isn't. You know, having five dollars is not equivalent to owing five dollars. It sure isn't. Um, you have more money if you are in the positive, and so positive numbers here are always larger or greater than negative numbers. Okay, but watch out for B, you guys. B can be simplified, and you should always simplify before you consider a number's value. So this is the number here that I see can be simplified. That doesn't just say negative 5, that says the absolute value of negative five. And remember what we learned, that absolute value is defined as a number's distance from zero on a number line. So I'm asking you, how far is negative five from zero on a number line? Well, of course, how far away is it? Well, it's five units away. And so the distance from zero to negative five on a number line is just positive five. In fact, that's what you're going to see absolute value bars do every time. Since distance is always positive, they're always just going to make their insides positive. And so uh, the absolute value of negative 5 is the same as 5. Uh, so now it's easy to compare the left and the right number here. 5 is, of course, equivalent to 5. All right, let's look at the next one, C. Okay, part of it is already simplified. Negative 3, of course, is just negative 3. But once again here, I have a number I should simplify. The opposite of the absolute value of 4. That's how I would read that. The opposite of the absolute value of 4. Now we have an inside to outside principle in math. We're going to start by working this inside, dealing with this absolute value of 4 before I negate it, deal with the negative. So how far is 4 from 0 on a number line? Why, of course, it's just 4 away. So even positive 4 becomes positive 4 when I use the absolute value bars, okay? Now, that being said, though, now I have to deal with the fact that that has a negative out front. So let's drop our negative, the, and we end up with negative 4. So which is bigger, negative 3 or negative 4? Well, I'm, if I'm in three dollars debt. I've got a little more money if you think about it that way than if I'm in four dollars debt. That's bigger trouble. Negative three is greater than negative four. Or another way to think of it visually, it's closer to zero on a number line. It's to the right. It's greater. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, and now the D, if you look at it, once again, both of these simplify on D. Let me go ahead and erase under here so I can have some room to work. This one just says the opposite of negative 2. That's easy enough to do. These parentheses just are visually holding the space between the two minus signs there for you. So it's the opposite of negative 2. Of course, that's just positive 2. And now let's deal with the opposite of the absolute value of negative 2. Let's see what happens. Well, the absolute value of negative 2, I need to work with that first. I'm going to work on that inside. So the absolute value of negative 2, of course, is positive 2, then drop the negative. And so with this one, I end up with negative 2. 
Uh, so what is bigger, 2 or negative 2? Of course, it's 2, so 2 is greater than negative 2. And did I really make only greater than symbols here? Apparently, I did. Greater than or equal to. No less than. <laughs> All right. Okay, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.